Hey everyone, Brendan Wilson here. Today I am going to go over how to import photos to Lightroom. And even if you have been using Lightroom for years, there's a few tips in here that I think you're going to find super helpful. So when you're in Lightroom, there are a number of different modules that you can work in. The two that you'll most commonly be working in are library and develop. And to import photos into your library, you primarily do that from the library module by clicking the import button here in the bottom left. You can also import photos by going to file, import photos and video, and there's also a keyboard shortcut to get to the import dialog. We jump into the import dialog. This will automatically recognize if you have a card reader or a camera connected to your computer, and it's gonna load the photos from that particular location for you to import. And it's gonna build previews of those images as well. Now at the top of your, the import dialog, there's a couple of different options that depending on where you're importing your photos from may or may not be highlighted. If you're importing from a camera or card reader, you're gonna see copy as DNG and copy. If you're importing from another location, you may also see move and add highlighted here as options that you can select. In terms of importing from your camera, I recommend copying rather than using copy as DNG. When you use copy as DNG, it'll convert the raw file, whatever the native raw file format that you have with your camera into a DNG. There are some benefits potentially with saving space and some of the sidecar files that come along with a raw file, but this is also gonna lock you into the DNG file format. And my general recommendation is not to alter the original raw files associated with your, with your camera in any way. If you ever want to convert them to DNG in the future, you can do that in different ways within Lightroom. So I'm gonna choose copy. On the right side of Lightroom, we have a couple of different um, areas where we can adjust settings relative to our import. One of the biggest ones that I think people have questions with trying to figure out what option to choose is this build previews option. And there's four different things that you can select in here. Minimal, embedded in sidecar, standard, and one-to-one. -one. Now, minimal is gonna produce the smallest possible preview file within your Lightroom catalog, and this is gonna be the fastest way to import photos into your catalog. Embedded and Sidecar are gonna use the JPEG previews that are associated with your RAW file on your camera to use as preview files within your Lightroom catalog. The default option is standard, and this is gonna build a sort of moderately sized preview file that is gonna allow the image to be, to be displayed in sort of the fit view type within your library catalog. So it'll let you see sort of a full size image within your catalog. And then one-to-one -one is gonna build a full size preview. So if you click into an image and you want to inspect the focus or detail within the image, it, Lightroom has to build a one-to-one -one preview to view that image at 100%. Now, if you import your photos with a standard preview, you're gonna notice at, when you click to view your photos at 100%, either in the library develop module, there's gonna be a little thing that pops up at the bottom that says loading, and that's building that one-to-one -one preview before Lightroom can show you the full resolution version of that file. And so in order, to decide which of these you should select. If you don't really have a strong preference, I would stick with standard. If you're looking for really fast import speeds, I would choose minimal. And if you want to be able to move through your Lightroom catalog faster in terms of being able to inspect details in your images and not having to wait for that preview to build and load, I would choose one-to-one. -one. Now, Recognize if you choose one-to-one -one previews, that is gonna slow down the import process quite significantly. You're gonna see that it takes a while for Lightroom to go through and build those previews for all the images that you're importing. I personally tend to build one-to-one -one previews because whether I'm shooting dogs, which is what you see here on this import dialog, or landscapes, 
I want to go in and inspect the fine details of my images before I start any edits. And it's just handy to have those one-to-one -one previews built in the import process rather than when I'm going through and looking at my images, trying to decide where I want to start my edits. So I'm going to choose one-to-one. -one. You can also select this option to build smart previews. These are previews that will let you edit your image even if the original raw file is not accessible to the, uh, to the library. So if you're working with external drives that are being connected and disconnected from your computer, and that's where you're storing your raw files, and you know there might be a situation where you wanna work on some edits even though you don't have the raw files in that drive connected to your computer, you can build smart previews, you can do your edits, you're just not gonna be able to export those photos uh, until you have that original file uh, connected back to the library again. You can also copy your images to another location as a sort of a way to back up. You can also add them automatically to a collection within your library. Now here's a tip that I think that even if you're a seasoned Lightroom Pro, you will hopefully gain some benefit from this particular option that I have set up, which is to rename files upon import. Now by default, most cameras are going to name files with uh, three letters followed by four or five numbers. And that means that once you get to either 9,999 images or 99,999 images, that count is gonna restart. It also means that if you're moving from different cameras, it's possible to have images in your library with the same exact file name. Now for myself, I do quite a bit of work with magazines, editors, and clients. And one of the things that I struggle with with folks is when we're talking about a specific image, whether it's in a gallery or a Dropbox folder that I've sent folks, and I'm trying to figure out which of the maybe hundreds of images that I've delivered to them that they're uh, wanting sort of more work done on, or maybe they want a higher resolution version of that file, whatever it might be, that when we're just dealing with these generic file names, it can be kind of a pain for me to go back and find those images in my library. And so what I do is I rename every single image that I import into my library with a custom file name. And the format of this is my name dash a series of numbers that represents the date and time the image was taken. And this means that every single image in my library has a unique file name associated with it. It also means when I deliver my images to a client, they are gonna have a custom file name with my name in it. And so if they're working with other staff or those images are moving around that organization, you're not gonna enter a situation where someone doesn't know who the photographer was that took those images. It's gonna be right there in the file. It says Brendan Wiltsey and then a series of numbers. So let me show you what this looks like to set this up. You can go in here and choose a template. There's some default uh, templates that Lightroom will have for you, but if you come down here and say edit, and you can choose any one of these templates uh, to start sort of building a new one. I've just typed in my name, dash, and then I've selected the date as a four digit year, two digit month, two digit day, and then two digit hour, two digit minute, two digit second. And so that is going to label every one of my photos based on the date and time that that image was taken and also my name. Now, if you're shooting sports or action and you're going high frame rates, you may have more than one image. In fact, you may have quite a few taken in one particular second. And if that's the case, Lightroom is just gonna hyphenate the end of this file name with one, two, three, four, how many ever copies of, um, images occurred within that particular second of shooting. Now, like I said, the reason this is a major advantage is if I'm working with a client and they're asking me, you know, I want, uh, I really like this particular image, I can say, just give me the file name. I can plug that file name into Lightroom and bam, I know exactly what image they're referring to 
and I'm not having to sort through my Lightroom library trying to figure out what image they're talking about. So that's super handy. You can also, I'm just gonna collapse these that we've talked about. You can also apply uh, development settings and metadata uh, settings to your images upon import, including keywords. I tend not to do this with my images, but this can be helpful if you're, uh, especially if you're sort of on location shooting and you're showing images to a client while you're shooting to apply some development settings to those images upon import is just gonna get you a better looking image faster, especially if you're shooting raw files. And then you can, below this is your destination of where you wanna import your photos. Everyone's file organization is gonna look a little bit different. Um, I tend to organize my files by year and then within year, either location or client. So that is an overview of importing photos to Lightroom. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit the like button down below. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.